13 missiles have been launched from the territory of Belarus against the capital of Ukraine, Kyiv and Chernigov. Russia has withdrawn some of its forces from the east and Ukraine announced that among its next targets will be the Crimean Bridge. But more about all of this in a couple of minutes. What's up, investors? It's the Russian dude. And to begin with, let's go to the north of Ukraine, where probably one of the most unexpected things happened. As you can see from this video, this morning the capital of Ukraine was under attack. In addition to that, there were several missile strikes against the city of Chernihov. But what makes these attacks so unexpected is that all of these missiles came from the territory of Belarus. And specifically what I'm talking about here is that all of these missiles were launched from the air airport in Zabrivka, Hastomil region. According to the intelligence data, at this very moment on the territory of this airport there are still at least 10 S-300 missile systems and at least two short-range ballistic missile systems is Kander. The first target of these attacks was the military headquarters of Ukrainians in the city of Lutish. And the second target were the military positions of once again Ukrainians in Hanchirovska Chernihov region. But the main question here remains the same. Does this mean that the country of Belarus has officially joined this war on the side of Russia. At this very moment, this is a pretty tricky question and there are no definite answers from either of the sides. But let me tell you what, if this were the Russians on the territory of Belarus who initiated this attack, they had to ask for permission from Belarusian military and government representatives. And since these missiles were launched from the territory of Belarus, this means that this permission war granted. And from my understanding, since today, directly or indirectly, the country of Belarus is now involved in this war. In several seconds I'll be talking about the retreat of Russian forces from the east of Ukraine, but for now here is another shelling of the city of Kharkov. And as a result of these attacks against Kharkov, one of the objects that was destroyed was a park. In addition to that, another target of Russian attacks this night was the city of Chuhiev. And unfortunately, as a result of this attack, a civilian building was partially destroyed. And unfortunately, another city which was affected by Russian attacks this this night was the city of Krapivnitsky. Alright, and now as promised, let's talk about partial retreat of Russian forces from the east of Ukraine. And while I'm going there, please consider liking this video and subscribing to my channel if you like this style of daily updating. Alright, so the information about this retreat comes to us directly from the advisor to the president of Ukraine, Alexei Arestovich. First of all, it potentially means that Russians decided not to finalize its push against Donetsk region. What it means that there are still several territories which remain uncontested, but Russians decided that the cost of invading these territories will be too much. And because of this, Russians decided to reinforce its existing positions and also retreat partially its forces from the east. And it is estimated that those forces from the east will be sent to defend the south. Aristovich also says that this is a very big mistake from the Russian army. And the reason for this it is because Ukraine is dominant in the south and logistics is very disrupted. Which basically means that by the time Russian forces from the east will be relocated to the south, Ukraine will be much stronger. One of the reasons, according to Aristovich, is that at this very moment Russia has reached its peak potential. And obviously the only way from the top is all the way down. And at the same time Ukraine only increases its military power every single day, which basically means Ukraine will only become stronger. To confirm this fact, recently the the US Congress has approved sending extended range missiles for HIMARS to Ukraine. And these missiles are ATA SMC missiles with the range of approximately 300 kilometers. And in addition to that, Ukraine will receive free Bayraktar and all the money that Polish people collected for this Bayraktar will also be donated to Ukraine. And by the way, here is one quick and funny thing, because the Russian government thinks since Poland is helping so much Ukraine, the government of Poland expects something in return from Ukraine. And what they mean by that is that as soon as this war is over, 
Poland will claim some of Ukraine's territory. And basically, yes, if you are watching from Poland, please let me know if you expect something in return from Ukrainians. But anyway, back to the east of Ukraine, where in fact the counteroffensive of Ukraine has already started. If you remember, one of the major cities that Russia wanted to invade in the nearest future was Slavyansk. And as you can see, this night alone Ukrainian army was able to liberate a massive territory to the north of Dalina and Bogorodichne. It has also been reported that at this very moment the battle for Pasika is going on. And it is estimated that most likely Ukrainian forces will be successful here as well. As you can see, Ukrainian army immediately took the advantage of the Russian retreat from this area. But if we go a little bit to the south of Seversk, to the city of Bakhmut, we actually can see that Russians were able to advance a little bit. But anyways, it is estimated that one of the biggest groups of Russians at this very moment is inside Izum. And I'm personally assuming that this will be one of the next targets for Ukrainian counteroffensive. And before we talk about the statement of the Secretary of the National Defense Council of Ukraine, Alexei Danilov, that most likely one of the next targets of Ukrainians will be the destruction of Crimean bridge, here is a small update about another bridge, which is once again Antonovsky bridge. If you remember, yesterday the Ukrainian forces turned this bridge into Swiss cheese. And I was already talking about that this bridge is practically destroyed, because not a single military vehicle is now able to use this bridge. But only today the Russian infiltrator in Kherson region, Kirill Stremausov, has finally confirmed confirmed that yes, the bridge is basically unusable. And because of this, as you can see from these pictures, Russians have already assembled pontoons. And it has been reported that these pontoons are from the Soviet era. Because of this, the quality of these temporary bridges are obviously not the highest, and for this reason, not every single military vehicle can still use it. But anyways, and pay attention here, because this is pretty funny, it has been reported that right after the destruction of this bridge, the representatives of Russian government slash infiltrators in Kherson region started evacuating this city. According to the Russian side, the reason for this evacuation is that they achieved everything there is to achieve in this region and there are no longer needed there. But I mean, come on, we all know that Ukrainians are coming. Ok, since we are already speaking about the bridges, here is the statement as promised by Alexei Danilov about the Crimean bridge. He said that Ukraine will destroy this bridge. And he also added that this attack will happen as soon as Ukraine will be in perfect conditions. Which in my understanding means the following, that as soon as Ukraine receives these extended missiles from the west and as soon as they start pushing Russians away from the south, this is when they can potentially destroy this bridge. And to be honest, without a doubt, this will be one of the most crucial and important moments of this war. And if you don't want to miss this attack, please consider joining my Discord, because as soon as it happens, I will definitely post this news in my Discord. In addition to that, we as a community constantly donate money to Ukraine at the end of each month. And if you want to be a part of this group donation, please consider checking my page. All the links can be found in the description. Alright, and before I present you the new updates about the wheat problem and the importance of tomorrow, here are just a couple more updates from the south. First of all, here in this video, we can see another military warehouse of Russians being destroyed in Chernobyevka. And most likely, in response to that, and as a revenge of Russians for Antonovsky Bridge, they continued shelling Mikolaev. And unfortunately, as a result of these attacks, a local school was destroyed. Ok, and now let's talk about the updates about the weed problem and let me tell you what, tomorrow will be a very important day and soon you will know why. On this picture we can see this so-called green corridor which will be used by the ships to transport wheat in and out of Ukraine. Inside this red corridor ships will be sailing inside a convoy with the protection of military boats. The grain will be loaded and unloaded in this point number one. And as soon as the ship reaches port Point number two, this is when the convoy will stop following the ship. And the reason why this Friday is going to be so important, it is because tomorrow the very first Ukrainian ship with Ukrainian wheat will leave Odessa port. And let's see if their voyage will be successful or Russians once again break their promise and attack 
this ship. And speaking about the wheat, just before the very first expedition, Egypt has terminated its contract with Ukraine about the supply of 240 thousands of wheat. This happened right after the visit of the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Russia, Sergei Lavrov, and the timing is pretty suspicious. Welcome to another episode of Ridiculous Russian Propaganda. And today we have this video which was uploaded by some conspiracy theorists in America about the possibility that the current president Biden is actually a duplicate. The video basically points out the differences between Vice President Biden and the President Biden. And even though, as mentioned previously, this video was published by conspiracy theorists, Russian propaganda started promoting this video as that this video was shown during every single federal and state TV channel. The narrative goes basically as following. It's like, come on, look at this. This guy is definitely not real. The real Biden is either dead or he's sitting somewhere in the bunker. Which, by the way, sounds pretty suspiciously the same as just one of the presidents we all know about. And I mean, come on. <laughs> the country of Russia speaking about the president of another country who is hiding in a bunker, doesn't show up on public public and probably using doppelgangers is the next level hypocrisy. And yes, if you reached all the way until this moment, you are a true hero. And if you don't want to duplicate Biden, come to your house at night and start shaking hands with the air, please consider becoming my channel member. I don't know how it helps, but trust me, it will. In addition to that, don't forget about our charitable live stream this Saturday, where I'll make a big announcement. Thank you so much for your attention, check the links in the description, stay safe and see you tomorrow.